world's weirdest restaurants takes you to France to go back in time and live high on the hog. There's what dig in with both hands here. Magic. Let the festival begin. Then we fly to Florida to get bad to the bone. We have enormous portions. I don't think I've ever seen so much meat on one table before. Uh, I always wear a loose shirt. Wow. Welcome to hell. Then we're invited to Italy to have some pizza in purgatory. I feel like I'm having a religious experience. <laughs> and arrive in Arizona to chow down on a monster of a meal. I love all my friends to death. Cold red is spitting venom. Get out of Eating at the historic La Caverne d'Oublier in Provence, France, lets you dine like a king on a pauper's budget. Literally. Talk about old school. The whole town of Provence is a world heritage site, and Caverne d'Oublier is situated in the basement of a medieval castle. Crazy people are here. They say, come to eat the food of the Middle Age. And it's not just the menu that's authentic, so is the entertainment. I like this place because it's feeling medieval. First time I walked in, it was like being transported back in time. That medieval experience extends to their five-course set menu. The food, we have different plates. We have soup, we have pork, and a lot of uh, vegetables. And all the food is very fresh, and uh, it's a great meal. To ensure freshness, the staff here follow the lead of their medieval ancestors. They grow it themselves. You do this before every meal? Every meal, yeah, we have to do that because it's fresh vegetable, it's, it's better taste. Fresh produce from the French countryside, you know this is gonna be a great meal. But before customers can partake in the feast, proper attire is required. All right, time to get into the dress of the period. Uh, no. What do you think? It's not my color. There we go. What can you say if the hat fits, wear it. I choose this, uh, this costume because it's uh, beautiful and I love the hat. Oh, I felt like being a lord. So 15th century Liberace. It's funny to watch the guests streaming in. I mean, they're so tentative. They don't know what to expect in this room. I guess that's not surprising when a guy like this is greeting you at the door. I believe this is what they call the medieval version of a lazy Susan. The carrots are straight from the garden, the potatoes are straight from the garden. It just goes to show that you don't need complicated ingredients to make a hearty soup. Look at this, a boatload of meat pies presided over by a pheasant. That's amazing. Spicy meat wrapped up in this beautiful pastry. It's super light and super layered. We've got a lot of herbs and spices in here, some spinach. This would be equally as welcomed in any restaurant today as it was a thousand years ago. People say I'm the star of this place, but I don't know. Maybe it's because I like to eat and I love people. These rusty wrought iron gates that lead down to these stone steps, they're your first hint that this isn't your typical restaurant. And how often are you met by the heads of three wild boars? You know where the rest of them ended up. These steep stone steps are nothing less than treacherous. The look and feel of this room with its arched ceiling, it's just stunning, and I mean, how could it not be? It was built in the 11th century, and it's decorated with the same feeling. I mean, you've got your old tapestries, wrought iron candle holders. The whole room is illuminated by candlelight. You've got wandering minstrels, fire eaters, and an endless jug of wine. That's my kind of history lesson. Talk about dining high on the hog. Well, there's what dig in with both hands here. It's sweet, it's succulent, it's meaty. It's no wonder the recipe for pork ribs has endured for a thousand years. And do you, do you enjoy eating with your hands? Yeah. To eat with my hand, it's nice, very nice. Let the festival begin. This is like an authentic instrument from the period. Yeah, the same period, it's the same dress, it's the same smile, it's the same joke. <laughs> One minute you're eating your meal, the next moment you're part of the juggling act. Brie, the king of cheeses. It's gooey, it's stinky, it's luscious. It's the best cheese I've ever tasted. Hard to kiss a girl, she says, after eating this cheese. Let's put that theory to test here. This 
place breaks every restaurant rule in the books. It's in a dark basement, they've got no silverware, and they enforce a dress code. Yet somehow, it's been going strong for a thousand years. Great, uh, great show, and uh, quite nice to be in the middle age for a uh, night. Nice. Beautiful experience for every age. Ah, c'était très bien. Very good. It was an excellent party. Magic. You know, it doesn't matter where you are or what century it is, every party ends with a conga line. What do you get when you combine a doll's house, the North Pole, and the golden age of Hollywood? The answer, the bubble room, right here in Captiva, Florida. Further proof that sometimes too much of a good thing, just like the Florida sunshine, can be wonderful. Hi, welcome to the bubble room. Hello, thank you. Welcome to the bubble room. Wow. The bubble room was created by a couple who clearly had too much stuff. And for the past three decades, it's been the local favorite for seafood, cakes, and fun. Fire! I describe the bubble room as crazy, over the top, Christmas every day, and a 30s and 40s Hollywood glamour theme with pictures all over the place. We've been coming here for 30 years. And how has the restaurant changed in 30 years? Not much. It's pretty much the same, and it's fabulous. Just outside is the blistering heat of the Florida sunshine and the pristine beaches of the Gulf Coast. But when you walk in the front door, you've got a winter wonderland. Now that's weird. <laughs> We have enormous portions. People come in here knowing that they're going to have leftovers for the next day. Where do you put it all? When I come to the bubble room, I always wear a loose shirt. <laughs> I'm Nadia. I'm going to be a bubble scout. I'll go with the pink flamingo. I think I'm going to try uh, the Eddie Fishman. And uh, also, I would like to try the Duck Ellington. And anything else that you think is extra special. So what's your strategy for eating here? I mean, there's so much great food. I stir myself for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Pink flamingo coming right out. Sweet. When I say sweet, I literally mean sweet. There's strawberry, some banana, a bit of rum. Perfect for the Florida beach. Hey, check this out. These vintage Christmas ornaments, this is where the bubble room gets its name. It's marvelous she crab. She crab. Look at that. Looks so rich and creamy. Kind of like a milkshake with a few pieces of crab in it. From the moment that you walk into the entrance of the bubble room, you know you're in a very special place. The inspiration for this came from the original owners that loved the period, the 40s and 50s. Over here, you've got a clown in a speedboat, and then you rotate around, and there's a muskox, an amazing assortment of movie memorabilia. It's hard to figure out how they've chosen all this stuff, but it all works in some really crazy way. Every time you turn a corner here, you walk into another room that has another completely different theme. <laughs> I'm going to be your bubble scout tonight. So, Dan, what's it take to be a bubble scout? It takes nerves of steel, Bob. Our training process is pretty lengthy. It's about a month. This is our Jamaican rum cake. It's a pound cake soaked in rum, chocolate mousse filling. Their first day, they have 24 hours to learn our dessert spiels. New York-style cheesecake, graham cracker crust, almonds. They have to do it under 40 seconds. Tropical breeze, mandarin orange, pineapple cream cheese icing. The qualification here is to be goofy. I'm also in the Army Reserve. I'm training to be a drill sergeant. Whipped cream and strawberries. We also have a key lime pie and a Butterfinger ice cream pie with an Oreo crust. Being a bubble scout's awesome. Duck Ellington was orange glaze, pitches, and bananas. Wow, look at this. Duck Ellington. Generous half of a roasted duck, some beautiful wild rice, some nice veggies. Man, this dish has got me bubbling over with enthusiasm. We've never had a bad meal here. We've probably been here over 100 times. I don't think I've ever seen so much meat on one table before. That's the Tarzan. <laughs> and you've ordered? The Jane. Eddie Fisherman, been on the menu for 33 years. It's a grouper with a layer of brown sugar, Reese crackers, and walnuts. Oh, fantastic. So that was cooked inside this brown paper this lunch bag? This was steamed and baked. You got it. It's just falling apart. That's beautiful. Wait a minute. I thought you said you were going to demolish that whole steak. That steak looks like it demolished you. I whipped out. You whipped out. Look at this man, the real Tarzan. Bad to the bone. <laughs> Bob, it takes two weeks to train a bubble scout. You have two minutes. Get ready. Day one of training is cakes. Okay. If you don't make it, you go home. Go. All right, here we go. New York cheesecake, almond crust, tropical fruit, uh, 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 yummy icing, orange crunch, classic red velvet, coconut layer cake, and lastly, French tort with strawberries and whipped cream. I think that's the only one you got right. <laughs> 
When you're standing out here, what are you thinking about? The cake. The cake. It's just it's all about the cake. I'm sitting here in the tunnel of love, and there is a whole lot of love on this table. I think I'll start with the award-winning orange crunch. All right, that is just too good. This is the Butterfinger cake. Oh, yeah. If you looked up decadence in the dictionary, you can find a picture of this cake. Where are we going next on this magical cake tour? Red velvet cake. I mean, this cake has as much flavor as it does color. Last but not least, the super moist chocolate cake. I feel guilty just looking at this cake, but I don't feel bad eating it. You know, the fun of the bubble room transcends all age groups. Whether you're four years old and here for the Santas, or 40 years old and here for the cake, there's something for everyone. The atmosphere is unique, but it's really the people that bring us back. Memorabilia, the antiques, the servers, the desserts, everything is weird, from top to bottom. Bob, you didn't make it. You can keep the hat, but I'm gonna keep the cake. Is that all right? Fair deal? Sure. The Refugio Deli Artisti restaurant in Doso, Italy is the only restaurant in the world where you actually look forward to being told to go to hell. At Refugio, the owners take it so seriously, they even dress the part. Uh, Refugio de... The Refugio Del Artisti is inspired by the Divine Comedy and its three different parts. The Divine Comedy is a classic from the 14th century in which the lead character, Dante, travels from hell through purgatory to get to heaven. And that's the story that this restaurant is based on. And just like the epic poem, I'm gonna start my voyage to the afterlife in the underworld, which in this case is a traditional Italian restaurant located in the compound. Welcome to hell. The first thing that greets you as you walk through the door is this grim torture room. And then, as you move on to the next room, you realize that Dante's version of hell isn't so bad after all. Oh yeah. In the Divine Comedy, there's this saying that the devil only makes pots, not lids. And as you look on the ceiling, you see hundreds, if not thousands, of copper pots, none of which have lids. When I first saw this place, I thought, wow, this is a museum. This is amazing. This is a skirt steak, and it's wrapped around some bacon and a little bit of arugula. The fattiness of the bacon combined with that rich meat flavor and the brightness of the arugula. Man, if this is hell, <laughs> sign me up. People are amazed with everything they see in hell, and the food here is hot and spicy. How'd you choose between hell, purgatory, and heaven? Well, the food is very good in hell. And since I'm such a good girl, I like to go to hell sometimes. <laughs> this is a really unusual regional dish. It's a Belgian endive wrapped with lardo di carlinata, which is fat from the pig's back. It's pressed and spiced with herb. Well, the first thing you get is the crunch of the Belgian endive, and then you get the smokiness of that cheese, and it's all finished with the richness of that lardo. Well, check this out. This is a 14th century interpretation of Dante's Inferno, and it's sitting over this fireplace, which is really more of a hearth. I mean, you could park a car in this thing. And over here, a pair of leather boots actually worn by Italy's notorious dictator, Mussolini. These chairs, hand-carved in India. And these goblets, Venetian glass. Who knew people in hell lived like kings? Hell suits me, because I like the heat. Gnocchi smothered in a gargonzola sauce with walnuts. It's rich beyond belief. This brings me so close to heaven, I can almost hear the angels singing. So I'm not in heaven yet, but like Dante, I'm ready to make the trek to the second realm of the afterlife, purgatory. What an amazing collection of artifacts. Over here, old prosciutto slicers. Some of these are about 100 years old. And over here, you've got a wall of scissors. But the piece de resistance in the whole room are these antique brass instruments that collectively form a ceiling over your head. One of the amazing things about purgatory is that in the room connected to it, they sing karaoke, which is actually my version of hell, but that's another story. <laughs> Customers love the Purgatory Pizzeria for its thin crust and for the ingredients they won't find anywhere else, like peppercorns and walnuts. The thing about eating pizza here in Italy is it always just looks so much better. Look how thin this crust is. I'm just gonna fold it over, dive right in. There are things exploding in my mouth right now. Peppercorns, walnuts, olives. Oh, this is incredible. I mean, if this is what Purgatory is really like, I'm prepared to stay here for an eternity. Now that I've experienced hell and purgatory, I can't wait to see what awaits me in heaven. I feel like I'm having a religious experience. Walking into this room is nothing short of overwhelming. I mean, everywhere you look, everywhere you turn, there are artifacts, enormous collections of everything. You've got glorious examples of stained glass, ancient tattered monk's robe, 
and all sorts of beautifully sculpted pieces of furniture. Armando has collected each and every piece in this room, and some of it goes back to the 14th century. I should have known there'd be a fully stocked bar in heaven. It is absent with the bohemian style. Ah, bohemian style absent. They call this the green fairy, and if it wasn't for divine intervention, this glass would probably explode. Ah, you know, I think absinthe really does make the heart grow fonder. That's nice. Where else can you experience heaven, hell, and purgatory all in a single night? Uh, going to a rest restaurant, finding a church, quite interesting. Father, I'm here for confession. I've got a lot of ground to cover, so I made some notes. Bob, go to hell. Excellent! I already know what I'm going to order. Monsterland here in Mesa, Arizona, every night is Fright Night. You can eat, drink, and come face to face with the living dead. <laughs> this place is a living nightmare. Walking into Monsterland is like walking into a haunted house year round. We have everything from animatronics to servers and costumes, even customers come in costume every day. Tell me about the food here. Ghoulishly delicious. <laughs> we have everything from burgers to chicken fingers. Still haven't found a finger on those birds, but they are delicious. Ah! It's awesome. I come here all the time, and it's it's the only monster-themed restaurant I've ever been to, ever. That's kind of scary, isn't it? No. No? Man, how are you so tough? I don't know. What scares you for real? Not a lot. No? Snakes? No. A little bit. Little Sharks? Bit. Sharks with lasers. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I'll start with the bat wings, and then I'll try the jaws, the children of the corn, a Dr. Jekyll chicken sandwich, and uh, the Monsterland burger. The Sentience Way has all the classic elements of a horror scene. Up here, you've got a chandelier covered in cobwebs, and over here, the man himself, Count Dracula. <laughs> and if you're really feeling brave, Monsterland's haunted house is just a few steps away. Ah, this cobweb is spitting venom. Wow. Look at the fangs on this werewolf and those eyes! Whoa! Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love all my friends to death! This is the Monster Burger Challenge. You have to eat all this in how long? Only 20 minutes. Well, the nice thing is you don't have to worry about having a heart attack because you're already dead. <laughs> These are bat wings. Bat wings, I love it. Look at this, a nice full wing. These are fantastic. They're generous, very meaty. It's got that classic buffalo wing flavor to it. Who knew bats tasted so good? Here's your jaws, sir. My jaws. Ah, that's very beautiful. Grilled shrimp, nice fresh tomato salsa here. Those shrimp, they're perfectly grilled. The tomatoes, fresh as can be. And the sauce on here is an aioli. And I'm getting a little bit of lime juice and a little bit of cilantro. You know, I'm happy that zombies only eat brains because it leaves a lot more for me. The food is amazing. Everything is fresh. We get a lot of our veggies from the local farmer's market. Children of the corn. Zombie hush puppies. Wow, that's a perfect fritter. Super, super crispy on the outside. Not too dense on the inside. Nice corn kernels and some cilantro inside. This is classic zombie comfort food. The main dining area here is in the center of a haunted, decrepit castle, and it's full of all these dead and very decaying characters. Dragons, werewolves, animated Frankenstein. <laughs> and the man we're all gonna meet one day, the Grim Reaper. <laughs> A nice southwestern touch here. A whole roasted poblano chili, melted jack cheese, deep fried onion strings, and then the burger itself is smothered with a chipotle aioli. With all these flavors going on here, this is definitely one burger I'd come back from the grave for. Here's your jiggle chicken sandwich. Uh, thank Enjoy. you very much. You're welcome. You got a nice fresh toasted bun, chicken, bacon, avocado. Who else knows what's lurking in here? The bun is so fresh, the chicken is moist, the avocado is creamy, the bacon is crisp, and the chipotle aioli just adds a whole extra layer. Take this to the crib, I promise you won't be hungry for a really long time. Believe it or not, this is a real wedding. To infect as many living as possible. To infect as many living as possible. We love zombies here. We do zombie weddings, zombie proms, zombie walks. We even had a vow renewal ceremony. You may now eat your partner. What a nice day for a zombie wedding. You know that line, till death do us part? Yeah. Doesn't apply here. What's on the reception menu? Brains. <laughs> 
You got a little bit of brain on your cheek there. Mm, thanks. <laughs> They call these dragon eggs. It's similar to a fritter, but it's made out of cookie dough. And it's got some vanilla and chocolate chips inside. The outside is like a super crispy cookie. And the inside is just moist and luscious. Forget it, I'm not sharing with you. Where else can you witness a real zombie wedding? Get chased by ghouls for a dark, scary haunted house? Then have bat wings for dinner and brains for dessert. This place is weird because it's the only restaurant you can go to and get the crap scared out of here. You're gonna die! There's only one thing left to do right now! Get out of there! Let's run through my life! What do you think of this place? Grotesquely awesome. And once you're dead, you can just stay here forever, right? That's right. I could. I'm planning on it. Brains!